Yes, indeed. And welcome to Radio Shuttleworth. Did you have a good weekend? I certainly did. I went for an Italian meal with my wife Mary and my family friend, Mr Ken Worthington. Whilst there, we had the pleasure of meeting Ray and Brenda Cooper. Also the daughter, Lindsay. They were all there celebrating the fact that Lindsay is now a fully qualified optical technician. Congratulations, Lindsay. Ray has asked me to mention that he has a Bosch sander for sale, an unwanted gift, still boxed, if anybody's interested, do it in contact. That's who I am, so... You know, hold off for a while, if you will. Oh, excuse me, somebody's here. Ken! Hello. Hello, John. Can I come in? Of course you can. You're the producer of Radio Shuttleworth. Thank you. Not that you need a producer anymore. What do you mean? Well, I've just heard the new style beginning, John. While sitting in my car, finishing off some paperwork. Yeah. Thanks for the name check, by the way. You're welcome. But, um, oh, superb delivery. Yeah? Your new keyboard works a treat. It does, doesn't it? And the way you rode those faders on your music centre. <laughs> Absolute joy to hear. Oh, thank you. And don't think your good work's going unnoticed, John. No. Because I've had an inquiry this week from a hospital radio station in Staffordshire. They're very interested. Really? Hmm? Oh. You carry on like this, and Radio 4 are going to be struggling to hold on to you. Yeah? Hmm? Oh. You know, things are happening. The movie's imminent. Well... It's not so bad being on Radio 4, Ken. Not since we had the new jingles done. Mm. Have a listen to this, listeners. Oh, oh. Mm. What can you say to that, Ken? Nothing. Brilliant. Mm. That was, of course, recorded in a studio in Wathondern, mm. which uh, I believe is run by an ex-miner and his girlfriend. Yes. Who both look like Rod Stewart, don't they? Mm. Yes, they do. Yeah. No, actually. What have you got there, Ken? It's um, a new contract for you, John, that I'd very much like you to sign. Ooh. Same terms as before, but this time for a 25-year period. Oh, Ken. I'm very keen that um, we should build upon what we've achieved to date. Yes. So have a look through it when you have a moment. Thank you. And sign it by the end of tonight, please. Because I don't want to lose momentum. No. All right, Ken. Well, obviously I can't look at it right now because we're doing the show. Mm. And uh, the listeners... We'll be keen to know who's on the show, Ken. Mm. So let's press play on the, the Music Centre and find out. All right. What's on the show, John? What's on the show? Tell us at once, we're dying to know. Well, Ken, on the show today, top TV celebrity Vanessa Feltz will be confessing all on the sofa. Aspiring artist Boothby Graffo will be hoping to impress an impresario and the answer at last to Ken's infuriating brain teaser. All this and more on this week's edition of Radio Shuttleworth. Yes, you have got the answer to the brain teaser, haven't you, Ken? Oh, yes. You mustn't let us down again. No, I won't, I promise. All right. Mm. Oh, that'll be Vanessa. Oh. <coughs> oh, it's not Vanessa. Who are you? I'm Boothby Graffo. Oh, I see. Come on in, Boothby. Impress an impresario, a chance to join Ken Stable. Impress an impresario, a deal is on the table. Impress an impresario, and I'll make you a star, you know. Win Ken's applause, the world is yours. Incur his wrath. It's an early bath. Mm, it will be. Yep. And as Booth Bigraffo climbs astride a bar stool in the kitchen, prior to commencing his warm-up, the question must be asked once again, Ken. Mm. Why do these young performers dress so drably? Mm. Where's the Lurex jacket? Where's the velvet pantaloons? Yes. And the cummerbund, mm. you know. Yes. He's just got uh, jeans and uh, a shirt without a collar on. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, his hair could be gelled and teased into a lovely quiff. It could. But he's chosen not to do that. No. I mean, he's not going to be offered a 25-year contract, is he? No. No. But then the way his dress suggests he wouldn't be stupid enough to sign one. <gasps> oh, 
What did you say? Uh, nothing. Be quiet, John. It's, it's about to start. Oh, right. <laughs> I opened the door for you, but you didn't notice. Ignored me and walked straight through, despite all my protests. And so I assumed that you had been skydiving before. And the way that you looked when I saw you on the ground, you couldn't repeat it. I'll never forget your face, cause they let me keep it. It's hanging in pride of place, scaring the birds and keeping the rabbits off the carrots that you never got to grow. What do you think of that one then, Ken? Mm, yeah, I, well, um, I don't know really. What did you like it? Uh, well, uh, wasn't much to go on, was there? There wasn't. It was so short. Mm -hmm. Can we can we have another one? Both be. Is there time, John? Yes, I think there is. Vanessa's not here yet, so uh, another one, please, both be. Mm. Um, so Ken yeah, can yeah. form a proper judgment. Yes. No, oh, this is best. Windy Miller, isn't it, John? Yes, I see what you mean. It'd be good for children's parties. He would. Mm. Yeah. I watched you sleep last night. You look so warm and safe. I went to touch your hair, but had to stop myself. If you woke up, you'd know that I was in your house. I wish you were my love, not just the bloke next door. Oh, um, yeah. John. I'm what? sorry, I'm going to have to go. Why? It's Sean Cullen all over again. It is. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do this item anymore. Ken! What about the children's party? Oh! I enjoyed that, Boothby. Thank you very much, John. It's uh, vignettes of family life, isn't it? Yeah. Have you done many children's parties? Uh, no, never, never. No? Oh, I don't know why. Oh, excuse me. Uh, catch up with you later, Boothby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Vanessa Feltz. Hello. Pleased to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. John Shuttleworth. Thanks for asking me. Oh, not at all. Uh, come in. Come in, Vanessa. Thanks. Um, do you want to, uh, can I take your coat? You've got a little cape on, haven't you? Yeah, do you like it? It's lovely. Thank you. Let me hang that up on the, uh, yeah. I think it's nice of you to call it little. Oh, well, you know what, there's going to be to size. You're very, very gallant, though, and chivalrous. I hadn't really realised that about you. Hadn't you? Oh. After you. Thank you very much. This is our lounge, Vanessa. Very nice. Um, glass of sherry? Yeah. Yeah? Thank you very much. Lovely. There you go. Thanks a lot. You're very polite and uh, demure yourself, Vanessa. Am I? Yeah, and it's surprising. Really? Because you've done... Uh, Daytime TV with lots of people shouting at each other and even, you know, attacking each other. They didn't shout that much on the Vanessa show. Never really. No. No. Well, later on, if it's all right, if, if you wouldn't mind for the last time uh, adjudicating between me and Mary, because we've got a little dispute. Oh, yes, I'll do my best. You see, my wife's a, a keep-fit junkie. <laughs> she thinks she's a, a DIY widow. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? Yes. So there's a conflict there. Would you think I'll do any good? I don't want to make things worse between you. <sighs> Couldn't be worse than it is, oh, Vanessa. I'll do my best. You don't want a sort of Jerry Springer-style violent altercation, do you? No, but, you know, we do want it to be quite uh, ebullient and All right. heated. All right, well, I'll bring, I'll bring the, you know, yeah. the best I can to it, sure. Lovely. And you can uh, put your cape back on, because that'll give you uh, a judge-like quality. Yeah. More sherry, Vanessa? Oh, yes. Uh, hey, is yes. it true that you used to go to the sweet shop in a uh, pink fairy gown? <laughs> Something. Read that somewhere. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Well, it's sort of true. Yeah, I, I used to know a pink fairy gown, but I used to. Uh, I, I I always had a wardrobe for a life that I wasn't living. Let's put it like that. And I always dressed in a, I mean, as if I was sort of Ethel Merman making the descent to do the grand finale in that show business when I was really just going down for a sherbet dab. You're right. Yes, you're yeah. right. Is that because you live in a fantasy world? I suppose so. Can't it was, face reality. It's a lot nicer than reality, isn't it? Well, <clears throat> people used to say to my mother, Valerie, we saw Vanessa wafting down the road in red chiffon with a carnation held between her palms. Where was she going? And my yeah. mother had to lie and make up something appropriate. She couldn't say for a packet of polos and a bunty. It's a good read, the bunty, isn't it? it? Very good. What's your favourite story in it? Well, I used to enjoy the four Marys. Four Marys. Don't you still, though? Um, well, now it's just the one Mary. 
<laughs> oh, hello, hello. You're right. This is uh, Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa hello. Thoughts. Hello. You all right? Yes, yeah, fine. Good. Mm. I love your show. Thank you very much. Why is it finished? I've moved to the BBC, but I hope you'll watch the new one that starts in January. Yes. Mm. I might do. Ooh. John, I thought we were saving that sherry for Christmas. Oh, just having a tipple, love. The right one? No, thank you. I'm after step class in a minute. Oh, see what I mean, Vanessa? Yeah. By the way, John, can you come and shift your work, mate? Uh, I'm trying to limber up and there's no room. Right, love. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we seem on good terms at the moment, but that, you know, belies the the truth. Because so it's just an, a subcurrent of tension. Absolutely. OK, I did pick up on that. Good. Vanessa, I'm very glad you've come. Thanks because for I've having got... me. Oh, not at all. The pleasure is entirely mine. Um, but if you're getting pleasure from it as well, then that's all well and good. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I need your advice. Because oh. uh, it's all happening for me, like it is for you. Right. Um, my agent has just offered me a new 25-year contract. I, what? Oh, don't be funny. No. I think it's all... Uh, have you got a solicitor that's investigating this for you as well? Oh. You need a, You need a top-flight showbiz lawyer, you know. Oh, because that's what you've got into. Of course I have. Because I'm a writer thinking you, strictly speaking, not got an agent. I don't you? have an agent. Oh, doesn't she? And I don't know whether you need one, because <gasps> you seem to me to be very much in control of your career. Oh, Vanessa. <clears throat> I would definitely not sign. Right. Oh, I, I really sure. Charming. Yeah. Because so, in, uh, Vanessa is advising John not to sign his new contract, for, um, while she, having just signed a highly lucrative deal with the BBC, is herself without representation. Ooh, you know, that's very interesting. That's a good gig. Do you know John at the Row? No. John at the Row played um, Alan Adale in uh, an all-female production of Robin Hood. Really? In Keithley. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, shot to wear a green bikini. Yeah. <laughs> she looked lovely, though. Yeah. Mm. Well, she doesn't make you do that. Ken, you're back? Yes. Have you met uh, Vanessa Fouts? Vanessa, darling, hello again. Hello. Mm. We met at a um, Dooley's concert. Where? Oh, you must remember, surely. No, I don't think so. You had Barry Chuckle on your shoulders. Did I? Ooh. John, why don't you go and do the next item? Well, Vanessa and I have a lot to catch up on. Oh, hmm. all right. Can I offer you another sherry, Vanessa? Oh, yes. Oh, perhaps you'd prefer something stronger, like a Malibu. That's a fabulous idea. Yes. <laughs> oh. John needs a job to earn a honest bob. It's time to annoy a prospective Afternoon, Boy, yes, hello. I'm ringing up about the uh, part-time job for the swimming instructor. For the swimming? Yes. Can you give me any more details? Um, I, I can't, but I'll, I'll try and find somebody that can. Just a moment, Thank please. Thank you. <sighs> Hurry up. Hello, can oh. I help you? Oh, yes, hello. I'm ringing up about the... Um, position for swimming instructor. Oh, yes. Would you like some details, Sandy? Yes. I mean, I'm not, um, I've not taught swimming before, but I'm a strong swimmer. Right. You know, I'm not so good on uh, butterfly. I tend to give up after a few strokes. I become a bit self-conscious, you know, because I'm creating quite a lot of spray. But I can do a swallow dive. Um, honey pots, I'm good at. Do you know what a honey pot is? No. That's, well, I think it's called bombing now. Right. But in the old days, it, it was a honey pot, and I had to do one for me uh, for me wolf cub um, badge. Right. You know. We do actually. I mean, the qualifications required are um, RLSS National Pool Lifeguard qualification. Oof. Right. ASA teacher certificate. Yeah. I mean, I could do um, a length underwater. Uh, I don't tend to do it so much now because there's lots of kiddies in the shallow end. You know, they tend to bonk you on the head, you know, when you <laughs> get there. And uh, that's a bit frustrating. I'm just very... Is it young people I'd be working with? Yes. Yeah. Do you provide um, a whistle for the su successful applicant? Do you want some details sending? Um, I'm not so sure, because you're in Lincoln, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm in Sheffield. It's quite a long way to come. Yeah. Just for the day. I'll have a think about it. All right, then. Thank, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Radio Shadow World. I'm a bad call.
book, but I'm a much worse driver. Last night I crashed my kitchen into a tree. The power steering on my fan assisted oven went. I'm a bad son, but I'm a much worse father, because my children never get any treats. They're diabetic, though to tell the truth they're not. I only say that because it saves me on sweets. And this is why, this is why, this is why I only sing the chorus. Big Raffo there, with his final number. You may have wondered what that rattling noise was. Well, apparently it's called a rhythm pick, which is a percussive instrument used by guitarists. Or you can do what I did and have every bone in your hand broken. <laughs> and you get the same effect. Yeah, very funny. Actually, you would be good as a children's entertainer, but you'll have to achieve it on your own, Boothby, because Ken is busy entertaining Vanessa Feltz and will not, I suspect, be inviting you to join his stable. Huh. But must ask you now, please, to uh, quit the premises. Right. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, you too, John. Thanks a lot. Yeah, see ya. Was that your son? I saw. It was. He's on his way to Victoria Wine. Do so, the night shift. So is his bedroom for you? Hey, I don't like the way the conversation's turning. Can I have a snowball? No, you can't. On your way, lad. Thank you very much, John. Yes. <laughs> Oof. Why do they always turn funny at the end? If you want to cry less and fill your life with mirth, tune in your wireless to Radio Shuttleworth. Right, I can finish my interview with Vanessa Feltz now. Oh. Come on, Vanessa, just sign it. <gasps> no, I don't want to. Look, 25 years is not an excessively long period. All right, then, 20. There, I've amended the contract. Come on, sign. No. Perhaps the little lady needs another Malibu to help her to see sense. Oh, no. Yes, Vanessa. <laughs> Stop! Stop this madness, Ken. John! Oh. <clears throat> you know, Vanessa doesn't want another drink. Oh. She's had enough. Mm. Give that to you. <gasps> John! What are you doing? No! <laughs> she doesn't want an agent, Ken. Oh. And you know what, Ken? What? Neither do I. There. No! Yikes. That's what I think of your 25-year contract. Oh, John, I've behaved very badly. Yes, you have, actually. Mm, yes. Can't believe it. Oh. You know, we're still on air, Ken. Really? The listeners will have heard everything. Oh. At least now they know what you like. Yes. You know, you're, um, what's the word? A rat bag. Yes. Uh, it's not the word no. I was thinking of, but you are that, yes. Mm -hmm. I am. Oh, Vanessa's fallen asleep now. Oh, dear. I've lost my star guest midway through the show. That's bad programming, Mr Producer. It is, yes. That hospital radio station in Staffordshire, they won't be interested anymore. No. Now I'll be stuck on Radio 4 forever. I'm sorry, John. Vanessa, wake up. Vanessa? Mm. She's only had a few Malibus. Yes, but look at the level on the sherry bottle, Ken. Oh, yes. Mary will be furious. What should we do, John? Well... We could play Mary's Tina Turner tape. Mm -hmm. Let that run till the end of the show. Oh. I don't think the listeners would have a problem with that. They wouldn't. But Mary might. Uh, you know, I've not got your permission. Oh. So, instead, Ken, let's perform the new song that we've co-written, uh, Your Words, My Music, <gasps> all about the time oh. when you were falling apart. Yes. Yeah? Oh. Right, lovely. Mm. I'd be delighted. Yes, because you were being a bit of a wastrel, weren't you, Ken? I was. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, wastrel. Oh. Uh, you're becoming one again. Mm. Let's hope performing this song will halt the downward spine. I'm sure it will. Good. Red wine and hobnobs in my living room. It feels like Christmas in the middle of June. And I'm still not dressed. Just underpants and vests oh, The house is a mess But I confess I couldn't care less <laughs> Red wine and hobnobs On a summer's afternoon I'm getting tired 
Dancing a bit like Mick up now, from Simply Red. So it's bumping and grinding. Low centre of gravity, you know. Oh, we've got on to uh, trance. Number four. Oh, lovely. Oh. But Ken's uh, adapting his movements to the new rhythm. Superbly well. Little finger jive, you know. Oh. That's it. Back on course. Oh. Vanessa slept right through that. I was enjoying myself there. Stand by, Ken. Red wine and hobnobs. Oh, what a crying shame. Well, think of the odd jobs you could have done that day. I suppose so. Ken, were you depressed? Maybe a little, yes. So. But I didn't mind. I had a lovely time. It, it was, was a, a very nice wine. Yeah. And I feel a sense of loss for the day I was undressed and unwashed. You can't do it. I do, Jim. I can't deny it. You're crazy, then. Right, I've been joined in the lounge by my daughter, Karen, uh, making a rare appearance on Radio Shuttleworth. Say hello, love. Hello. Oof, you know, you've, got, you've got to be more uh, vociferous than that, love. Oh, shut up. I realise it's not pleasant for you, <laughs> um, having to take sides in a parental dispute, but you're going to have to, because you're the only one in the audience, mm. apart from Ken, and he's uh, nodding off. <laughs> Ken! No. Yes, I'm, I'm awake. All those uh, Malibus are taking the toll upon him now. <laughs> Whereas Vanessa is fully revived. Am I? Uh, sipping her black coffee and ready to adjudicate in the final item on today's show. Um, I've got a little jingle for this. Stand by, everybody. You right, love? Yeah. Oof, Mary's looking a bit angry. But she, no, that's right, because uh, we're at loggerheads. Get on with it. <clears throat> right, here we go. <laughs> Feeling under pressure, your life's a mess, yeah. I suggest you confess to Vanessa. Hello and welcome to uh, today's edition of Vanessa. Today we have a family in turmoil. The question is, Mary is the queen of lean. She's constantly at the gym. She is a gym junkie where John is the king of anaglypta. If he hasn't got a wallpaper paster in his hand, the man is just not happy. How can they continue? Can we find a compromise? Let's ask John. John, has this not gone far enough? It's gone too far, Vanessa. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm really angry. About it because Mary goes, uh, she's a um, keep fit junkie, you know, and uh, well, she only goes twice a week. Uh, she goes to uh, step class and bums and tums on <laughs> Thursday. You know, please, that's it. I don't want to interrupt, but can it not be said, John, that she's doing this for you, hmm? keeping uh, herself trim for you? Oh, I noticed it like that. You see, it could be said that it's just a tribute to you, uh, that she loves you so very much that she wants to keep her body finely uh, honed for your delectation. Yep. Please, uh, Vanessa, don't... Uh, <laughs> you know, let's keep it... Um, mm. I I'm wondering if all of this is about something else, a much deeper issue that's gnawing away at your marriage. I mean, DIY, going to the gym. Aren't you both escaping from something deeper? I mean, is there any problem in the bedroom between the no. two of you? <laughs> hey, that's enough. Right, we're ending the art oh, We certainly are. Karen... Go and do your own work. Drinks on his sherry and starts crying. Oh, Mary's stormed out oh, now. Dear. Oh, that was very quick. She was supposed to come and attack me, and uh, Ken was going to pull her off. Mm. Oh, Vanessa. Ken, what, what do you think of all of this? Oh, Vanessa, the undresser. <laughs> oh, 
Come and interview me on the bed. Can. No, I don't think so, actually, after your behaviour earlier today. No. I'd rather not, if that's okay. No, I don't want to. Oh, Vanessa. Sure, up, Ken. Right, we've come to the end of the show. We're going to end with a little song which extols the virtues of family life and will prove to everybody that uh, me and Mary are actually very happily married. And you're going to sing it with me, aren't you, Vanessa? Try stopping me. Lovely. Oh, Ken, quickly, what's the answer to the brain teaser? Oh, he's fallen asleep. I don't believe it. Oh, I've just had an idea. Uh, let's make it a competition. If you know the answer to Ken's brain teaser, drop us a line and uh, first correct answer out of the hat will win a lovely prize. Um, Patrick Moore's Byro, which I left behind last week. Um, next week is the final show in the series. Weatherman John Catley will be my guest. So do tune in. Here's the lyrics, Vanessa. Thank you. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thanks a lot. Even though you've been a bit rude at times. Sorry. <laughs> I asked her to dance. That was how you met her. Beneath the plastic plants. You got to know her better. The start of our romance. Which ended at the altar. The buffet was nice, but sadly. What, John? I got Miss Beach up badly. Oh, dear. Being wed, it's true. Adds a new dimension. But sometimes I feel blue. Post-marital tension. There's such a lot to do. The kitchen extension. Ooh, 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 ooh. And now a baby's too. <laughs> it was her. And it was a boy. You christened him Darren. And then we had to go. And she's called Karen. There are pride and joy. The future of the nation. There's another on the way. Oh, is there really? Congratulations. No, there isn't. Don't be silly, Ken. <laughs> Everybody. Women take husbands, men take wives. The crowning glory of our lives. And two out of every three survives. Happy ever after. Happy ever after. Happy ever after. Mary, you're back, hmm? Oh, what we gonna be? Happy ever after. The British family. It's happy ever after. Every single day. Fun, joy and laughter. The British family. It's happy ever after. Give us a cuddle off. All right. Mm. <laughs> Radio Shuttleworth was written and performed by Graham Fellows with additional material by Martin Willis. The programme was produced by Graham Fellows and Dawn Ellis. The series producer was Paul Schlesinger.